Alrighty, it's the Jacks back again. And let me see, see here, I got rid of that crappy shelf when I found this nice little file cabinet, which cleans up the area real nice and gets rid of all the clutter because I much prefer a Spartan build. And what's it? Brake levers. I have finally got brake levers. For my road bike. All right. So I'm gonna quickly go over the bikes I have right now. This here, is the next Lajala. Uh, it's my stepdad's bike. I got it when he died. I always like these next Lajalas because I like their design and the fact they're alloy and they're fairly light bike. This one just needs a new crank. As you can see, it's got the wrong crank on it. It's the only one I had to fit to get this ride over the time I needed it. Um, Odyssey 1999 front brake. Uh, the bars and stem and brake lever from my old rat ride. Uh, I want to red the hell out of this damn thing. The back wheel needs a new sprocket because of the crank has the chain line screwed up. So the sprocket, so the chain falls off and the sprocket is breaking teeth. We need to replace that. Next one, my beautiful Schwinn High Sierra 1983. Got a narrow Kindle Quest on the front, wide Kindle Quest on the back. I need a new derail, front derailleur that actually has some pull to it. And I adjusted these center pull brakes and the pads started rubbing on the tire casing, so I need a new tire. This here is what I've been riding. Call it the Cobbler. Coffee Cranbrook. Don't know what year, late model. 650B rear, currently on a flat. Well, with these brake mounts on here, so I can have a nice front brake. And as you can see, the tire is ripped. Look at that, right in perfect position. <clears throat> Bars, this is pretty much everything I had at home to throw on it, except for the saddle, which I got at the Fall City Bicycle Co-op. Running a 44.17. Because the bigger front sprocket was too wobbly to wear on it. Uh, don't worry about that. That's a BMX style Ashtabula one piece. And I've got a video talking about Ashtabula cranks that I want to put on here. That thing in the back is a Huffy Kozo. Weird Walmart bike, 21 speed, internal cable routing, alloy wheels. I've converted it to a one by. This is, I'm going to be putting this together for a friend of mine. I need another trigger shifter for the front of it. <clears throat> I want to uh, put a better front brake on that as well. But at Fall City, I have a cruiser hitting the way that has, that takes linear pull brakes on the front and rear. So, that I need to get this down there because if my back wheel fits on the back of that bike, I'm swapping all the parts over. And now that I think about it, I can take this front fork and chuck it on this one because their headsets are the same length. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Here's my uh, 83 Nishiki Olympic. I convert it to a single speed. I've got some info on this. It currently has a flat. It's COVID build. Now, what I'm actually focusing on. Uh, is my. Forgot what year. I think 86, 85. Schwinn Prelude. Road bike. Have a, bought a tube for that. 
about new bar tape. Alrighty, so let me make sure these are going to be on the right sides. Okay, that one goes that side. This one goes on this side. And while I'm at it, I might as well throw the uh, front wheel on it. <clears throat> I've been wanting to get this back together. The, the front brake cable that I had gotten from um, On Your Left Cycles, I cut it a tad too short. So, and the replacement later model brake levers I had did not have return springs in them, which means they didn't do this to help the braking open the brake calibers back up. Alright, get on there. Stop fucking around. Oh, damn you. There. Tight enough. Now, I think I may have said this before on the video. Actually, before I get to that, let me finish the story. I had the brake cable and the levers I needed to replace, so I got a new housing from on your left. <clears throat> I brought the, uh, I thought I had a housing. But it turned out to be the rest of the shifter cable housing. So the brake cables did not fit in it. So what I did was I cut it to fit anyway, took it up to all your left cycles and had them cut the brake cable housing to the same length. It's probably a tad longer, but ain't gonna be a big deal. And also, As you see, I got my bars taped up because I don't have lizard skin on this this time. I have this Sinelli cork, which is, as you know, is somewhat porous. Red to match red, lightly red. I want red accents on this bike. Next thing I find is some uh, red pedals and that'll be all the red on it. But we know that uh, this cork tape is porous, and we know what happens with alloy bars when people are, you know, too lazy and don't check their bars or change their tape or any of that. It corrodes, galvanizes, however you want to say it, alumarustus. It alumarust. So I discovered. To watching one someone's technique, how they would take electrical tape and wrap it sticky side up, so that if you're having a crash, your bar tape wouldn't unravel because it'd be held down with the electrical tape. My idea is because I'm also a person who doesn't like to do a lot of maintenance on my bikes. Is Electrical tape is a vinyl, which is not affected by the saltiness of sweat. And despite the fact that my hands do not sweat, I decided to wrap them anyway. And this is a good trick for those that uh, don't do a lot of servicing on their bikes. 
you wrap the electrical tape around your aluminum bars, especially if you use cork tape, that way that you can kind of set it and forget it like you probably already do, but you ain't got to worry about your bars corroding and and you out riding one day and your bar snaps in half and you about die. I'm just going to check and see uh, about where I need this at. Yes. Yeah, actually, probably perfect. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think it looks about right. I do. And then sometimes I like to cock them in a little bit just for ease on the wrist since you're usually like this and you're not like that. And I'm rarely ever using the drops, so I'm just going to do the, I'm just going to leave the top half done like that. And then this side is going to be next. I'm going to go ahead and throw these on. And that's pretty much all I have for biking today. As you see, these are also a little tilted in a little bit. And I believe I also made a video on uh, how I do my uh, brake cables. This leaves a lot of slack and flexibility in the brake cable so that uh, you don't have to worry about risking it rubbing on the frame and ruining your paint or in my case stickers. Oh, and I still need some more stickers for this thing. I actually just picked some up uh, where I picked up these used levers at, at uh, Parkside Bikes. They had some bike shop stickers, which go nice because I have a few of them on here from uh, Jacket Green Shop, Bike Career Shop, uh, on here uh, down there. I've got uh, Fall City Community Bike Works, the Go Op, got their sticker on there. And one of my old frames, and I'm about, not about to move this around and see it, but I have uh, uh, Barstown Road Bicycle Company's uh Sticker I peeled off one of my old frames. That company's no longer with us now. And I also have uh, my good man Russ Sleep Cycle sticker. Russ used to work for Jackie, and he's been making his own bicycles. Let me get this damn thing to focus. He's been making his own bicycles for about 10 years now. Yeah, check them out on Instagram. I might put the put the links in the description. And now I have a park size sticker to draw on this thing. Like I said before, I don't like blue and white, so I'm trying to sticker this the best I can. And if any of my uh, zero watchers know where I could possibly get a different fork for the front of this bike, please let me know. I would actually love to have a carbon fork for this thing, but as we see, this head tube is humongous. And I would just like to get rid of, I would like to swap out the front fork more for appearance reasons than any kind of functionality. Of course, I've also thought about just wrapping this damn thing down with electrical tape to make it black or maybe throwing stickers on it. But if, if I can change this fork out, I would rather change this fork out and I don't want to touch this fork until just in case I might be able to replace the fork. This one, I don't care about. I actually don't want to do too much to this bike. I want to leave it as close to original as possible. Just like this one. Didn't want to do no heavy resto mining to this bike. But, uh, let's see, I don't know if I talked about this bike before, but I finally got the new crank. Thanks to one of the BCB members, Bike Cruise Brews members, uh, AJ. He got me a crank to replace it because I screwed up and cross-threaded a pedal on the other crank. And then I found a set of chain rings. Cause I did. It just needs to be a double. As you can tell, this thing is not go off-road. This is a street fighter. 
And last but not least, as much as uh, this saddle matches the bike, this old Schwinn Ranger saddle is uncomfortable as hell. And this would be the last thing this bike needs after I get this front brake and this bar tape situated. But all right, tune in next time. It's the Jacks signing out.